was tonight, seeing everybody up there and what they had to say, Coach? Oh, it was uh, very heartwarming, humbling, you know, all the phrases that you would use. But, but truly that, you know, it's uh, emotional. But a lot of, as I said, you know, it's just it's just an awful lot of special people, and everybody here, you know, whether they were on the floor or in the stands, everybody here had a role in this. You know, this wasn't a Bill's night or anything. Uh, I mean, somebody has to take the blame for it. I get that, but uh, everybody had a role in it. Do you think back to 30 years, you know, when you first got here, could you ever imagined? Like this would be the outcome. Like you'd accomplish all you did. People would be here tonight, like it was. Like, would you ever imagine this is what you'd accomplish? Well, you know, in all reality, I never thought about it, uh, and I truly didn't. You know, I didn't think. You know, what if we do this? What if we do that? Uh, you know, can I actually stay that long? You know, and all that goes into it. Uh, that wasn't the case. You know, it was just focus on, you know, where we were at the time and. You know, how could we get where we wanted to be in the next two, three, four, five years? And it never, it never got any further than that. Yeah. So, anyway, here we are. <laughs> Bill, I don't know if you can single it down to one or two things, but what are you most proud of like, now that you've had time to reflect on your career? Well, I think first and foremost, it's, it's, I'm proud of my family, my immediate family. By that I mean my own personal family. I just, uh, no one really knows. You know, Bobby got up and spoke to it, but nobody really knows what they have to endure. And uh, I mean, there are some great times for them, some great things that take place, but uh, there, there's so much that one wouldn't recognize you know, unless you actually sat in that seat uh, to realize how demanding it can be, the kind of sacrifices that a family has to make. Uh, and, and not always, you know, everything out there wasn't always rosy, you know. And so when, I mean, when you guys write about how bad we are and how bad I am, I mean, that, that cuts to the quick for your family. I mean, they're the ones, you know, I can live with it. You know, coaches live with that. You know, but families, that's, that's a little different. That's, that's hard. That's hard for a child. You know, it's hard for a wife. Uh, so, I, I mean, that's, that's probably the most difficult thing. But that's why I say my family is, you know, so significant in, in all of this and has been and always will be. Uh, I, I think, you know, when you look at the history of the program, you know, some of the things, it, you know, it was alluded to, I think, you know, since we've been in the Big 12 Conference, Kansas State University football program has the best academic record of any school in the conference. And I'm proud of that. That, that means something to me. That, that tells me that, that we're doing something more than throwing a football out on the field and trying to create rough and tumble guys. Uh, you think about, uh, and not, you know, we're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but, uh, you know, my goal had always been to graduate 100% of players that went through our program. We've graduated close to 90% of the players that entered our program. One of the players, BJ, or one of them, mentioned uh, what we call a head start program, or excuse me, a second win program. And the second win was to draw players back who got away without a degree so that they could get their degrees. It's one of the things that, you know, that I think maybe I was a little unique about. Uh, I called every single, every single player that had gotten away without getting a degree for whatever reason, many of them going into the NFL and leaving to begin that process. But to call and talk with every semester. They didn't come back last semester. I'm on the phone with them again this semester. Our very first class, our very first class, I got a, a call probably a year and a half ago 
there was one player, and he's in his 50s, early 50s, 51 years old, I think, called me on the telephone and said, Coach, I just got my degree. That, was, that, that, that made 100% in that class. You know, that's a pretty special feeling. You know, it's great for him, but it's pretty special for me as well. And always tried to get all of our young guys to commit to do it. And a lot of them said, well, I don't want to, but, you know, you keep asking me, so I'm going to do it. And, and they do. And it's, and it's meaningful to them. Uh, and, and so many of them had gone on and already had great successes in their lives, but still came back to get, to get that degree. That was pretty special. And I think... You know, not that, again, that we've been perfect with it, but uh, you, you, you never read, I say never, very seldom did you ever write or did you ever print anything about players getting in trouble. I could say, yes, you know, on occasion, but, you know, very, very seldom. It was an oddity when that took place. And I'm proud of the young people that we've had in the program because they realize the value of that because it wasn't just representing Kansas State football. It was representing Kansas State and all the people that genuinely cared about Kansas State football, the community, and the Kansas State people across our country. I mean, those were, those were special things to me. So, and not that there aren't a lot more, but you know, those were up on the list. How has retirement been for you so far? Well, it's been it's been busier than I had uh, than I had thought or hoped for, and you know we're gradually slowing that down. And uh, I mean, all good causes, and I and I like to be active with uh, you know with good causes. But you know, they're also it just I had 20 in the month of April. I had 29 speaking engagements. And that's in a last count, I think there's probably 29 days in, in April somewhere in that vicinity. So I, that was, that's too much. That was a little too much. And I, uh, so we're, we're cutting back now and trying to practice him being able to say no a little bit more. But, Do you feel uh, like you're better prepared for retirement this, the second time around? Or? Well, you know, it took, I've always said it took about six months the first time before I really uh, realized what was going on and, and was at ease with it. Uh, taking a little longer this time, I think. Uh, I, I, I think back uh, about the question that you asked. I think about it from time to time. And uh, it just seems as though, uh, for whatever reason, it's not as... Uh, I haven't gotten through it as, as well as I did the last time. You know? So it's still on my mind, I guess. Uh, so I'm, I'm not 100% at ease yet, so, but it'll come, it'll come. When you think back to that first time, how, how much harder, or is it harder to watch a game as a, as a fan with no control over things than it was as a coach? Well, I, you know, the first time, uh, I didn't have a problem with yeah. it at all. Uh, I, you know, I thought the very first game that I watched was, I knew it was going to be unique and I didn't know, it, I didn't know how I would deal with it, but, uh. It, it worked out fine, and, and I really didn't have, uh, you know, maybe after the second or third game, everything, uh, I, I almost seemed like a fan. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how it'll be this time. We'll wait and see, I guess. You know, we'll find where, out. Where will you watch games next season? Uh, up, upstairs. We have a suite upstairs, and we'll send you uh, continue to. You know, that's where my wife, my family has been all along, so I'll, yeah, I'll join them. That's right, yeah. What would you say is your first impression of uh, Chris Climates? What do you think you did? Well, I think, you know, I haven't, I haven't spent any time with him. Uh, I met him uh, when he was introduced here. It was the first time that I actually got to, uh, to meet him, and I, I shared with Chris I would, uh, you know, I want to stay out of his way. I don't want to be a hindrance. And... Uh, but I'm always here if, you know, if there's anything I can help with, I'll always be here to help. You know, he seemed like a very genuine individual. Uh, I, I'm quite confident that he's very, uh, very, what would you say, very adept, you know, at, at what he does as a, uh, as a football coach and probably very adept seemingly as a, as a person as well, which, you know, is important. So. 
Have you picked up any new hobbies yet? Uh, no, not yet. I did get uh, my golf clubs out. And I pulled my five iron out, which is the only one that I use. <laughs> and I swung it once, and I had a hard time getting the club above my shoulders. So I'm doing some stretching exercises now, and I will re, uh, re approach the club here in a few days. And see, I promised Colbert that I would, and he keeps uh, pushing my buttons to try to get me to do it. But uh, I'll, get, I'll get on it. Outside of that, you know, we've just been busy doing all the things that we're trying to back away from, and then we'll, you know, I'm, I'm exercising, I do that, I do treadmill every day, I swim every day, and, uh, but, uh, and, and, you know, still, uh, there's an awful lot of things that, that I have put aside for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, for that matter, that uh, I'm, I'm trying to get through right now. Uh, my wife's upset with me because our house is full of boxes, that uh, I'm a pack rat and I've saved everything. So uh, there's, uh, in fact, it was my wife and part of the family were gone uh, this last week, uh, took a trip out to Colorado and I stayed back so I could begin to go through that process. Uh, and I finally, I have an office in our house, and uh, Thursday of this week was the first day that I actually got things cleaned out enough that I could actually sit down at my desk to uh, do some work there. So I'm, I'm making some headway in that respect, but I've, I bet there's, oh, I don't know, I bet there's 150 of those large, large boxes of stuff, you know? I'm, uh, our house is full, uh, our granddaughter has a house here and her garage is full. Sean has a big storage building on his property and uh, one, one wall is, you know, it's maybe 30 feet tall, is, is full of boxes, you know, stacked on top of each other. So I've got all that stuff to go through, so I, I'm going to do that part time here before too long. We'll get on it. But. Coach, whether it's the, the videos and the speeches from the players or everybody who comes out, I mean, what part of all this makes you the most emotional when you think back on a night like that? Well, I, I think all of it. I mean, I, I don't, I can't distinguish one from the other. You know, I was, uh, you know, obviously touched by, I was touched by the people that were here, and uh, whether they were sitting up there or sitting down here on the floor. I mean, just, uh, just to be here was. Uh, was emotional for me, uh, you know, things that were said, uh, and, uh, and many of the things that have been said in private uh, has been uh, an emotional thing for me, and certainly the things that were said by the speakers. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed the videotapes. I've asked Kenny, I'll get copies of those so I can really, you know, invest uh, even more thoroughly in, in watching those as well. And then, you know, just to receive all the correspondence, you know, that I get part of those boxes. I mean, there's probably 20 of those boxes that are just full of correspondence from fans, from Kansas State people, just from people in general all across the world, you know, that say such gracious things that, you know, that, I mean, that's, that's emotional to me as well when you think of it collectively, so. Have you thought at all now about switching sides and asking questions with us? Uh, asking questions with you? Yeah. No, I have no questions <laughs> to ask. I, uh, 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 that would lead me nowhere, I assure you. That, uh, uh, all right. Thank you all. Thank you.